Hi friends, this is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me. This is Highway Blossoms Part 5. 5. 5. We poked the Tetero to see the rest of it. It's been a hot minute since we played this. Because honestly, I was not that excited about it, honestly. But then... I went back just to double check. Because I was playing Our Life beginnings and always which is cute but I'm so bored <laughs> I'm so bored with it I think it's mainly because I was spoiled because I had like Heart of the Woods and Trixie and all of these other great games that we played poked out or for the Heart of the Woods if you haven't seen it <gasps> but then I realized Highway Blossom just had new DLC out and it also just got remastered and it's by the same developers as Heart of the Woods. And I was like, maybe I should try and give it another chance. So, here we are. Last we left off, we were with Amber and Marina, who had just found gold. <laughs> Literally gold. Found the first part of this guy's treasure, which is fascinating. Um... And they were in a squabble with <laughs> our antagonists, so to say. <laughs> Joe, I think her name was Tessa, and the other one who doesn't wear a shirt but is wearing a jumpsuit that's half zipped down. I don't remember her name. We'll, we'll figure it out along the way. And it's fine. <laughs> in, my, in my thought, like, I had a slow start. Partially because I was exhausted when I tried to record this the first time. So, partially that's on me. Two is always at any one of these starts, they're fairly slow. I need to take that into account. I'm not. I didn't. So, hopefully, from here on out, part five out, it's a lot more exciting. So, we'll see. Let's get back into it. Load. Ah, okay. So here we are. <laughs> Took me a second. This is where we left off in which... Um, I forgot their names, but they all burst in because they had borrowed the metal detector. And the metal detector is what they used to find the treasure box and that found the gold. Um, and then they burst in on poor Marina and Amber... Uh, and apparently they had a bid on whether or not they were sleeping together. They aren't. So, surprise. <laughs> Much has happened since my last entry. So, let me waste no time in beginning. As I mentioned previously, I had begun to develop a cough of sorts during my travels. At the time, I thought nothing of it. Just the result of being overexposed to the elements. After all, a handsomely rugged and worldly man, such as myself, should be used to such things. But... I digress. Unfortunately, the more I continued under the blazing sun, the more my condition worsened. Until finally, my body gave out. The last thing I remember is falling off my steed. Sometime later, I awoke next to a fire, with my horse nearby. I, myself, could not move. So I was held down by illness and sweat. But I was reassured by a man sitting across from me. Upon further inspection, I realized he was a native of this land. I had several encounters with people of his sort during my time on the wagon trail, so naturally I was suspicious and fearful for the remainder of my gold. <sighs> Racist there. <laughs> However, the man said he had no interest in such things. Yeah, because he probably has a much more fulfilled life. A dry, quiet fellow. The man told me his name is Lemacy, and that I was in a canyon his people occupied, although they had been driven in different in a different segment of it some years back. His English was quite fluent, and when I inquired, he said he had learned from settlers as a boy. Over the next several days, Lemacy would nurse me back to health. We would never stray too far, as he preferred looking after his estranged tribe from a distance. But I was able to explore portions of his home. 
Eventually, I stumbled upon a long, ruined home built into a cave on the side of the mountain. According to Count Lemacy, there was many more like it, though they originally belonged to the enemies of his ancestors. It was then that I realized where I would leave the next portion of my bounty. Hidden in one of the many caves of the person who saved me, who used to be his enemy of his ancestors. Perfect. Exactly what I'll do to celebrate this whole phenomenon. On my last day with him, I informed Lamacy of my plans, where he casually promised to guard it for me until I returned. But before I left, he pointed me in the direction of a sacred landmark. When so giant and huge, it would simultaneously be a conspicuous and inconspicuous hiding place. With that knowledge, I bid farewell to my new friend and trusted the gold in his care. Perhaps I will reward him with some of it on my return. Or perhaps he was like, what the heck? <laughs> Let me bury, bury this and no one's going to look for it ever. You're my Lamessi, Amber. Oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> Suddenly, my chest feels like a hummingbird and fluttering around it. I shift my eyes around from her, from her smile and hid my face. Oh, it's adorable how queer she is. I, I do love that. I remember being just like delightfully surprised at how queer Amber is. Love it so much. Thanks. When you strip away the circumstances, I guess I did save and protect her from that Lamacy guy. Did the man did with the manta. Duh. When you strip away the circumstances, you know, like the racism and the you know, casual horribleness of everything about that situation. I did save her and protect her like that Lamacy guy did with the miner. That's true. A gorge is like a canyon, right? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Marina leans in closer and points to the entries. Drands of her soft hair tickling my cheek. I scoot back and power through it, taking a sharp breath to recollect myself. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I like the little hop. Marina nearly springs out of her seat in a burst of realization. Her head is an inch away from smacking into the ceiling. Oh my god. Does that mean we get to go to the Grand Canyon? Do we get to go to the Grand Canyon, Amber? Oh my goodness, I love her. Take her to the Grand Canyon, Amber. Not unless history decides to rewrite itself. <laughs> there are lots of canyons with ruins. One of them is the Grand Canyon, but most of them have been cleaned out for hundreds of years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> most of them cleaned out for hundreds of years. Hm. Choke down the ground. Indian ruins aren't exactly rarities around here. Maybe the other entry wasn't so bad after all. So we're looking for a place that was still being used in the 1850s. Hmm. Marina hunkers down and thinks with me. Wrinkles forming on her forehead as she tries to straighten out an answer. Pretty sure she doesn't know even where to start, but hey, at least she's trying. That's true. Good job giving her the benefit of the doubt here, Amber. Like, really, she's trying. And, like, you're kind of along for the ride. You've already made more money than you thought you ever would. Uh, and you have an adorable cute person who's laying on and sleeping in your couch. So, you know, all's good. Woo. Well, there is one place. Oh? Marina hardly gets a breath out before I crush her dreams once again. Not the Grand Canyon. <laughs> she slinks back into her chair and quietly pouts. It's still in Arizona, but it's a different place. Canyon de Shea. Oh. The Navajo weren't chased out until 1863, so the timing isn't too screwy. Place hmm. is loaded with ruins, too. Hmm. Also, apparently Navajo is a- I learned this, actually. You know, in all of the best places to learn information these days, which is apparently TikTok. Uh, <laughs> that Navajo was the name given to uh, the tribe. Not because it means, in Spanish, you know, um, 
those with knives. Uh, and so it's there's actually a unique native name for the tribe, but Navajo was kind of popularized because that was the Spaniard kind of ink conqueror type of way to talk about them. I never knew that and I never would have until you know just there's more information that pops up across any of our feeds that come through. You always have to vet it but like that's fascinating. It's just it's sad but it's so fascinating to just kind of rediscover um, information that you never would have stumbled across yourself. Places loaded with ruins. Oh, are they Pueblo in ruins? Ooh. My flow of information stops. She knows what I'm talking about? She can actually pronounce it? Uh, yeah. I'm surprised you know that. Huh? Yep, I've been reading some of those travel guides lying around. Super interesting. Oh, I love her. Adopt her, Amber. Those things must be about as old as I am by now. I don't have the art to throw them away when I was cleaning everything out. But you also didn't give her literally anything else to do, and you kind of just went to bed, closed the door, and then, like, ignored the world. Uh, and left her as to sleep on your crusty couch from your dead father's RV. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's keep going. Hey, that's how I did it. It's the best way to learn. Get it. Anyway, Canyon de Shea is pretty damn close to here. Get it. She gasps. So, it might have lined up with the route he took. Well, I can't be 100% positive, but... It's a good guess. Close my eyes and snap the book shut. The air between the pages puffs out at us. Then, with one eye open, shoot Marina a grin. Gay. I'm pretty sure. Get it. <laughs> Back on the road. It's literally like lesbian road trip. Arizona's highways are infamously boring. Nothing but hills up, down, up, down. There's nothing interesting to look at. Both sides of the road are smothered in nondescript shrubs. It's part of the country where you just zone out and drive on autopilot. When we finally see a sign for the town of Chinle, right next to the canyon, it feels like we're approaching the promised land. Marina looks up from the book she's reading, just in time to miss the sign. Was that it? Are we there yet? Nah, 40 miles to go still. So about half an hour. <laughs> okay. She makes sound like a pop of balloon and goes back to reading. We take an exit and a tiny excuse for our town. One of the places that has gas and few old houses. It's like a, a monopoly where you buy all the property you can, even though it's not that great. This is it? Marina repeats her earlier question as I slow down to turn left. Nope. Almost. I don't even know what this place is called. She makes pop balloon noise again, but leaves the book closed. So, sorry. She makes a pop balloon noise again, but leaves the book closed. When we finally reach Chinle, it's pretty obvious. It's the first real town we've seen in hours. The outskirts are industrial, dominated by what I assume are factories. A pair of stray dogs lope around along the side of the road, hungry and lean. Marina makes a sound of sympathy, pressing her face against glass as we pass them. Hey, Amber. Uh oh. We're not getting a dog. <laughs> not yet. You're not getting a dog. Your road trip, the lesbians. so cute! And we could dress him up in a bandana and... No way. I've never gotten why people want to dress their pets up like people. It's cute. Huh. Marina pouts. I figured she was just joking, but she didn't actually think I would let her get a dog, right? I, I don't know if you know how deep you've already gotten, Amber. It seems like all is forgotten by the time I pull into a gas station. She's bouncing in her seat with her usual enthusiasm. Or maybe it's her bladder. <laughs> the second guess must have been correct. Because as soon as I shut the, off the engine, she darts out of the RV and into the store. While she does that, I feel up. 
No telling when we'll see the next gas station. Could be a hundred miles, and this thing drinks gasoline like a thirsty dog drinks water. Facts. By the time I finish, Marina still isn't back, so I lock up and head inside. The store is devoid of it. Other customers. It's unremarkable with the usual selection of candy, chips, and overpriced beef jerky. I'm not hungry. Just pass some time. Soon, Marina trots out of the bathroom, glancing around. She spots me and heads over. Want anything? Duh. Let's see. <laughs> Duh. I mean, you are her source of, like, any food here. I leave her to agonize over the candy bars while I flip through some of the travel brochures beneath the window. There are a couple about Canyon de Shelley, which is our destination just up the road. There are flyers for other Arizona attractions too, including the non-local ones. Of course, there are a few brochures for the Grand Canyon, plus a couple must-see sites in Phoenix, the capital. There's even an ad for a novelty just called The Thing in Tuscan, but that's not far out of our way okay i'm ready but that's far out of our way okay i turn around marina has a couple king-sized candy bars in her hands and a large bottle of coke tucked under her arm you seriously need all that yes i thought we could share oh she gives me her best offended puppy impression fine fine I still don't want anything. But I can't say no to that. Yeah, you can't. Here. I'm gonna use the bathroom, too. Meet you at the car. Oh. Yeah, that's probably a problem. Why would you ever give her the wallet? Ever. <laughs> I place my wallet as a pallet of candy she's carrying and send her towards the attendant. When I come back out of the bathroom, Marina's still ta talking to the clerk. There's a bag in her hands, so she must have already finished paying, gotten distracted talking. I joined the two of them. Closed off, so only the guided tours are open right now. Marina looks like she's seen a ghost. What's up? I took my wallet from where it's just sitting, forgotten on the counter. Um, I was just asking about the canyon and the tours and stuff. The clerk nods. Yep. I was saying how if you're here to sightsee, you might have some trouble. A lot of it's closed off because of all the kids coming and causing trouble looking for treasure. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> I'm not surprised, but that's frustrating. What isn't closed off? Well, there are still some tours you can go on. <laughs> Most of them, I think. But you can't do the self-guided ones. Mm. Maria looks at me, eyes wide. Clearly, she's expecting some solution from me. I just smile at the attendant. Got it. Thank you. And let a dumbstruck Marina out of the store. As I unlock the RV, Marina prances around me. What are we gonna do? No oh, goodness. Well, I'm gonna take a nap. She stops. Huh? I'm tired, so I'm going to nap for a little bit. I checked one of the pamphlets, and there's a tour at 6.30, so we'll just join that and then sneak off. Like, on our own? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Her eyes go wide again. Amber, you're a genius! I twist the lock of my hair around my finger and glance away. Her constant compliments are a little embarrassing, especially for stuff that seems obvious to me. Thanks. It's not much of a plan, though. Yeah, but at least it's a plan. I thought we were just gonna have to give up or something. Oh nah. my goodness. Rules are made to be broken and all that. Ah. Uh, I feel a bit, a bit guilty, but we'll be breaking rules specifically put in place because of people like us. But I can safely say that we'll be more careful than the average treasure hunter. That's true. <laughs> just picturing Mariah. Mariah, that's her name. Yeah, I can easily see her smashing down the ancient ruins in her search. But yeah, wake me up at 5.30. Unless you're going to nap too. Nope, I'm not tired anymore, so I'll just read some more. Okay. Alright, good night. Night night! I leave her up in the front as I head back to my bed and fall into it. After bunching up the blankets around me, it didn't take long to fall asleep. Hey! 
Yay! Why are we getting the title screen again? Cool. Hi. Is this your her dream? Just highway blossoms. <laughs> but um, I wake up slowly, fighting to keep my eyes open. In the back of my head, I can feel like something is wrong. It takes me a minute before I realize I've overslept. It's quarter to six. Marina was supposed to wake me up fifteen minutes Marina. ago. Marina. I call her name, but get no response. Rolling out of bed, I massage my eyes and stumble up towards the front. Of course she's asleep. Sprawled out on the dash with her head buried in her arms. Looks like she's been out a while. Jerking her by her shoulder, I shake her awake. Uh, what's up, Amber? Her speech is slurred by sleepiness. <laughs> Nor the temptation to make the not you joke. <sighs> How's that book you're reading? It's great. I just put it down to... A look of shock spreads across her face. Mounting horror takes over as she realizes the time. Oh god, I'm so, so sorry. I was just gonna nap, but then I forgot to set an alarm. I mean, to wake me up. Yeah, that's what alarms are for. Yep. Freaking out, she hurriedly tries to buckle her seatbelt, failing several times in her frenzy. <laughs> I pat her on the shoulder as I sit down. It's not even a big deal, but she's so worked out. That's cool. We're not late yet. Ready to go? Marina just nods, staring at the floor. <laughs> she looks kind of dead. <laughs> I buckle up and turn the key. The engine roars to life, and I throw it in reverse. I have to crane my neck to make sure I don't run over anybody. Roy signs direct to South Town and towards the canyon. After spending so long on the highway, going down these streets with lower speed limits it feels restrictive. From the corner of my eye, I watch Marina. She's being abnormally quiet. She fixes her hair, pops her knuckles, and rubs her shoulders, but she doesn't say anything. Finally, I cave. What's wrong with you? Huh? What do you mean? Her tone of voice is stressed. Maybe I'm more intimidating than I think. You're being weird. Super quiet. Oh, um... <laughs> um... I didn't know if you were mad at me or not. What? For falling asleep? She nods. Nah, I'm not mad. Trust me, you'd know for sure if I was. Facts. I told you it wasn't a big deal, didn't I? Well, yeah, but you're kind of a little intimidating, friend. You promise? Yeah, I promise. <laughs> Marina bounces in her seat, immediately cheerier. Okay, cool. Cause like, if you were mad at me already, that would be a bad sign. <laughs> Sign of what? That we wouldn't be good partners. You know, treasure hunting buddies? Uh-huh. Oh, we're partners now, are we? You're the sidekick, right? No way. I'm totally the main character. We're here because of me. That is an absolutely valid point. I laugh, causing her to turn around, turn away smiling. She's a lot cuter when she smiles. I've been smiling more too, I realize. It's, I think that it starts to make me sad again. Do I deserve to be smiling right now? Yeah, you do. Hey, Amber? Huh. Like she read my mind, Marina snaps me out of it. Can we listen to Super Crash again? <laughs> you seriously like that one? Supercross was one of those groups that Gramps loved to show off to other people because they were so weird. All the members played a different instrument on each album, so it was like a whole other band every time. Yeah, it was <laughs> different, but in a good way. It was different, but in a good way. That's definitely true. With one hand on the steering wheel, I dig around in the bin of tapes by my feet. I flick my gaze between that and the road. Eventually, I find the one I'm looking for. It was a Halloween orange case with text that looked like slime. When it starts to play, Marina hums along. She's almost on key. I guess she liked it enough to remember how the songs go. Crank the volume up, earning a grin from Marina. The sound is teeny and distorted at this level. Tinny. Tinny and distorted at this level. More distorted than usual, I mean. But it's also more fun. 
our smiles last all the way until we roll into the nearly empty parking lot. As I turn the volume back down, I can tell she's thinking the same thing Amber? I am. Amber? Yeah? Shouldn't there be, like, other people waiting here? Mm, there probably should. What time is it? Marina twists around the check. Uh, 6.20? What the hell? Did they start early? There were other cars around, but they were all unoccupied. My parking job is hasty, and I take two state spaces, but don't bother to correct it. Ooh, well. Huh. We hurry uh, out of the RV. I almost forget the key in the ignition and have to double, ch double back to grab it. Marina's are already over to the information desk, probably talking to a ranger. But then she turns back to me, the despair on her face visible even though it's, uh, uh, though it's getting dark. There's no one here! There aren't any lights on inside either. Probably closed six. I vaguely recall reading that on the brochure, but I thought there were still be someone around for the tours. Don't panic. I jog back to the RV, unlocking again, rummaging through the glove box. I pull out a light bl blue flashlight that Gramps gave me a few years back. I click it on and off a couple times to make sure it works. After I lock everything back up, I join Marina by the unhelpful help desk. She's bouncing on her heels, hands clasped together. Hey, it's alright. Worst comes to worst, we'll just do it tomorrow. Facts. But what if someone else finds the treasure tonight? I don't have an answer for that one. Guess we'll just have to catch up then, huh? Turning on the flashlight, I swing the beam around. While there's still some daylight left. Isn't it much? It isn't much. Maybe half an hour at the most. Catch up to what? The tour group, silly. Even if we're late, they can't have left that long ago. And they'll be stopping a bunch, so we should be able to find them easily. By ourselves? Yeah. I was about to say, this is kind of ideal, because you guys were going to sneak off anyway, so... Her voice is almost a squawk, like a surprised parrot. Well, yeah. I don't see anyone else around. Do you? No. Swivel around, illuminating nothing but rocks and bushes. Come on, it'll be fine. It's not like there are going to be bears or mountain lions this close to a parking lot. Facts. Those kinds of things live here? <laughs> if she didn't know that, then what is she afraid of? Probably. I don't know. But come on, we're wasting time. Marina whimpers. Then, surprising me, she grabs my hand. Hers is sweaty and warm. Oh, that blush on Amber's face is adorable. I turn and look at her, meet her wide eyes. Looks like she might cry. It makes me regret being so pushy. We don't have to do it if you don't want to. She shakes her head, but cleans to me like a kid, her free hand buried in my clothes. If it weren't any brighter, she'd see my face turn red. No, like I said, if we don't go now, someone else will beat us to it. Just stay close, okay? Okay. Yeah, of course. Oh, this is cute. She lets me lead, but doesn't go. doesn't let go of my hand. A large wooden sign marks the start of the trail. So, uh, are you scared of the dark? Props. No answer. But you were fine at Shiprock. <laughs> that was different. Was it because you were there? Marie's arm jerks, but she doesn't let go. I was in a town with people. Oh my god. Roads and no mountain lions. <laughs> oh my goodness. The temptation to tease her more <laughs> is strong, but I don't. Every time a bird calls or something makes the bush shake, I feel her flinch a little. Somehow, even this side of her is cute too. A little childish, sure, but. It's nice to have her rely on me to keep her safe. To take her mind off things, I make small talk. So, what are you gonna do once you're filthy rich from the treasure? Sorry, what? I asked what you'll do with your share of the treasure. Oh, um... I'm not sure yet. I haven't thought about it. That is a lie. There's no reason you wouldn't be looking for treasure if you didn't want something from it. We're out here looking, and you don't even have a plan for it? It was a spur-of-the-moment thing. What about you, huh? I don't know either. Ha! 
See, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't planning on looking for it, you know? I haven't spent as much time thinking about it. I glance behind me to see Marina stick out her tongue. I laugh. But, uh, let's see. I definitely need to pay off Gramps' hospital and funeral expenses. After that, I guess I should probably get the motorhome fixed up. It's not going to break down on us or anything, but it's kind of old. Why not just buy a new one? Hmm. Hell no! No response comes up snappier than I intended. It's just that it has sentimental value, you know? I'd rather keep that than buy a newer, better car. I grew up in that thing. I could never just replace it. Oh. After that, I'd probably just keep doing what I was doing before I met you. And what's that? Wandering. <laughs> Don't you want to stop wandering sometime? Oh. My steps slow a bit. It's an innocent question, but it hits me hard. Not yet, no. I whisper it. Marina catches up to me, dropping her head as she... Dropping my hand as she does so. At least I'm not the only one without a goal. <laughs> that was a weird noise, but like, I, she's right. I poke her in the side and she squirms away a few feet. No! Ow. Torque. It's hard to stay sad in our, around her. As we turn around a curve in the road, the tour group comes into view. Just ahead is a cluster of people, most of them armed with flashlights. It's hard to know for sure, but I can see at least a dozen distant figures. Tour guide is shining his light up at the rock face, illuminating some designs on it. Everyone has their backs to us. Try to be as sneaky as possible. Facts. We want to join up without them noticing, like we've been there the whole time. If anyone notices us show up, they might notice when we leave. Facts. Why do we have to join up in the first place? I don't know how to get to the ruins we're looking for. We'll stay with the group until the tour gets there, and then we'll sneak off. Marina nods. Okay, follow my lead. And remember, be as quiet as you can. We creep forward slowly. If someone were to turn around and see us, we'd look pretty suspicious, but nobody does. The lecture on... Petroglyphs gets their full attention. Marina cooks a rock and I tense up, expecting that to break the spell, but we're close enough now that if it did, it might not matter. We reach the back of the group, to our group without anyone noticing and give Marina a thumbs up, which she returns. Right, you can see the Anasazi ruins. Some of the Navajo people still call the area home. There's a living community in the canyon who... I'm not too interested in hearing about the history of the place, so I turn back to Marina. She's looking up at the pictures too, though her eyes appear glazed over. When she catches me staring, she blinks and then smiles. I smile back, though I must look like an idiot just watching her instead of the lecture. After a minute, the guide's speech concludes and we start to walk down the trail, much to my dismay. Before I can say anything to Marina, the woman in front of us turns around. Isn't that just crazy? Huh? takes me a second for me to realize that she's talking to me. She fits just about every stereotype of redneck. From the huge hat on her head to the baby stripe to her chest. She'd probably be attractive if not for the layers of sunscreen coating her face, even though it's nearly nighttime. She must look like a ghost. I said, isn't that just crazy? What he was saying about those Indians and how they used to communicate with each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even if I wanted to talk to her, I still have no idea what the guy had said. They were just so darn clever. Really makes you wonder how they all ended up dying out, huh? Uh... I'm pretty sure a lot of them are still alive. And like, some of them live here? In this canyon? <laughs> I hadn't heard that much at least, but apparently not everyone did. For a second, the woman looks at me like I'm crazy, but then she busts out laughing. Sorry, sorry, you're absolutely right. I was thinking of them Aztecs down in Mexico. Oh my god. Woman. Her laugh is more like a bray. She sounds like a farm animal. In my head, I hope- I keep hoping she'll turn back around and leave us alone. But we're not so lucky. She keeps on chatting us up. 
As we follow the trail, I'm self-conscious about how noisy she's being compared to the low lo noise level of the others. Say, is that where the name Texas comes from? From Aztec? No. Oh my god. <laughs> but before I can answer, she starts shouting at someone else. Howard! Hey, Howard! Come over here! By now, nearly everyone is looking at us. Ma'am, can you please keep your voice down? Oops, sorry. <laughs> she apologizes loudly. So much for staying inconspicuous. Howard makes his way over. He looks rather defeated. His face drooping and shoulders sh sagging. I figure he's the woman's husband. Yes, dear. Oh god, he has such a dead, lifeless face. I was just talking to this girl here about history. And I was wondering, does the name Texas have anything to do with the Aztecs? Since the words sound kind of similar? Oh, my brain. I don't think so. Facts. Huh, go figure. <laughs> she cackles again beside her Howard size. For his sake, I hope her family is loaded or something. <laughs> Every time she laughs, the baby on her chest bounces. But the lucky kid sleeps through it all. Maybe he's used to it. Anyway, I must have left my manners back in Wisconsin. My name's Linda, and this is my husband, Howard. Of course your name's Linda. <laughs> of course your name is Linda. <laughs> Her name is Linda. <laughs> this little chimp right here. <laughs> huh? She thrusts herself and the baby towards me. It's Dino. Ain't that just the cutest name? Dino? You named your kid Dino? Oh, Linda. I just crunched in response. I'm trying to see around her, up to where the guide is, alternating between shooting Linda death glares and trying to narrate the walk. If he's said anything useful about the canyon in the past couple of minutes, I've missed it entirely. Glancing over at Marina, who has pulled up away a couple fit feet, it looks like she's enjoying my torture in the struggling silence. Tears have formed at the corners of her eyes, glittering in the dying light. They're the good kind of tears, the kind from laughing too much. Her hand is smushed over her mouth, and she's shaking with the effort of staying quiet. <laughs> There's no way I can let her get away with that, especially since I need to get closer to the front of uh, for now. I grab her arm and tuck her over into Linda's line of sight. I'm Jane. The enthusiasm in my voice is so forced. And this is my friend, Malacy. Malacy? Amber? Jane. <laughs> I use the fake names just to be safe. Marina limply shakes Linda's hand, which has grabbed hers. The mirth has vanished from Marina's face. Good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Linda pumps her arm like a guillotine, grinning broadly and yet still managing to walk. That's impressive, especially like shaking and walking. Poof. It's so good to see young people taking an interest in nature and history and all oh that. My God, here we go. Are y'all from around here? We're originally from Tennessee, see, but moved to Wisconsin and. Oh my God, of course you're from Tennessee. Of course Linda's from Tennessee. <laughs> Oh my god. Having been properly introduced, I leave Marina to suffer through the family history. I shift away, walk ahead, passing by most of the tour group, so that I can better hear the guide. For a while, he talks about the wildlife and history of the park. After a couple of minutes, though, the lessons become more relevant. We'll be coming up on the mummy cave ruins here in just a little bit. That's one of the better known sites in the canyon. 700 years ago, it was a bustling Pablonian village. Huh. We can't get too close to the ruins, so unfortunately it might be a little too late to really see them clearly tonight. While the mummy cave itself hasn't ever been open to the public. That's all I needed to know, so I start to slip back towards Marina. It looks like she's still being held hostage by tales of Wisconsin family adventures. Linda noses me approaching. Oh, Jane, there you are. I was just telling Lacey about one of the cows I helped birth when I was younger. Oh my goodness. Why are you telling her about that? No. Why? Oh my god. 
I'm from the rural country, and honestly, I like I've been around that fair share of things. You don't want to go into detail about helping a cow give birth. Never. Don't Google it. Don't do anything around that. It scars your brain. I'm not sure how the conversation went from introductions to cow birth in such a short span of time because she's from Tennessee. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you don't know anything about the South until you live in the South or you meet someone that intimately connects to you about the South. <sighs> but I'm not curious enough to ask. Good for you, Jane. <laughs> when I rejoin Marina, she mouths two words. Save me! <laughs> Hold on, we're hearing that one again. Save me! <laughs> I don't know how to get out of this one. Annoyance aside, it'd be impossible to slip away with Linda's attention on us. It seems we're in luck, and so we go around another bend in the road. Something more interesting than Marina and me comes in the view. Oh, Howard, look! This is it. This is one of those mummy ruins I was telling you about. Linda elbows forward, moving ahead of us. You girls, make sure you get a good spot. You're gonna want to see this, even if it's dark out. She forges ahead, her husband trailing dutifully. As he passes, I can hear him say sorry, though I'm not certain. Once they are out of earshot, Marina makes it sound like a train letting out steam. Oh my god i thought i was gonna explode my ears or my head or my brain or something <laughs> saw you laughing and figured it wasn't fair if i was the only one who suffered i'd take it all back if i could seriously though first she was talking about herself then about her kid then about her childhood and then she started talking about growing up on a farm Somehow, she ended up going on about cows having babies and how messy it all is. I don't even know. Yeah, that sounds right. Thank you, Linda. What, you're not interested in that stuff? You no! Gross, gross, gross! Ha! She wrinkles her face up as she says it. I giggle, but then turn serious real fast. Okay, but listen. Because it's dark. The group probably isn't going to stop to look at the mummy cave ruins for very long. So we'll have to wait until we can sneak away again. And then go over there ourselves. How far away are they? No idea. I can't see from here. Just follow my lead again. Got it. Good. We've been at the very back of the group the entire time. The people right in front of us are much less interested in us than Linda was, so I don't think anyone will notice if we go missing. When we reach the railing, the guy stops to point out the ruins. They're across a small valley, a couple hundred yards away. In the darkness, it's almost impossible to see them. They're just a dark smudge against the even darker backdrop of a mountain. Marina and I are a few yards away from the group, too. Pretend to inspect something on the rock. So there's nothing there. Oh. After a short speech ends and the guide starts to lead everyone on again, I dart behind a rock and crouch down. Marina quickly follows. I can see her start to say something but I cut my, her, my hand over her mouth before she can get a word out. Silently, I shake my head. Marina nods twice so I can cover her face. In my head, I counted 60. Once a minute passes, I feel I peel myself away from the rock and stand back up. You should be safe now. Marina's face lights up and she claps her hands. I notice that she's taken out the journal page from the hiding spot again. That was so cool! It was like something out of a video game where you just sneak away right in front of everyone. Yeah. I guess so. But we still can't be noisy. They're not gonna be that far away. No flashlights either. Yeah. This close up. I can see her face fall at that. Don't worry. I'll be right beside you. There we go. Are we just gonna hop the fence and walk over there? Yeah, kinda. Unless you have any better ideas. What if they catch us? Then they'll throw us out. We're not gonna get arrested for trespassing or anything, are we? Nah, that'd be too much trouble for them. That's a good point. I say that, although I don't really actually know. Okay. They might try and make a point of you, especially if there's a lot of people like you. 
The uncertainty in her voice is obvious. I grab the paper from her hands and stuff it into my pocket. Let's go. The longer we wait, the more likely it is that they'll notice us missing. I stroll over to the metal rail, hopping, hoping that sound that I sound more confident than I am. Honestly, this is pretty risky and more than a little stupid. But it's also exciting. I duck down and underneath the rail after a moment. Marina does the same. We're officially out of bounds. After this small field, I can still just barely make out the shape of the ruins. They sit close to the mouth of the large cave that runs up the mountain like a scar. Okay, come on. Oh! Ah! There's an incline, but it's not too bad. Next to me, Marina spreads her arms out for balance, but I'm confident enough to not need to. Crossing over to the ruins themselves will be the riskiest part. There's no cover, and anybody who happens to look over will see us. We just have to hope that our tour guide has moved to somewhere without a line of sight on us. Okay, hurry. Grab Marina's hand and start to run. We sh she struggles to keep up, so I slow down a little bit. It takes maybe two minutes from one end to the other. When we reach the far well, far wall, not well, for our wall, Marina's breathing is strained. Don't do much running, do you? <laughs> Not it! Oh. <laughs> Every word is punctuated with a pant. I'm winning too, but find my lungs to not show it. I have to look strong for Marina. Do you... Do you now... Ready for the fun part? I'm ready for the fun part. Is it actually fun? <laughs> not yet. We've still got to get up there. I point to the lip of the cave, a good 50 feet or so above us still. Marina's face goes pale as she stares at the sheer rock wall in front of us. We're not gonna have to climb that, are we? Yeah, kinda. How else? I wait for a second for the shock to hit her face before I laugh and shake my head. Just kidding. Come over here. Short distance away is a slope, somewhat steep but not too long. It leads up to the part of the cave, close to the ruins. We actually do have to go up this one. Her face still looks doubtful. I don't know if I can get up that. <laughs> sure you can. It's easy. Look. As you slide down on rock, loose rocks is what I'm guessing. I hike up a couple steps, dirt, and a bit of gravel tumble past my feet, but it's mostly stable. It's almost all dirt. If it was loose rock, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Still looking uncertain, Marina takes a careful step behind me, then another. She slides back down a bit with each Try step. Try to spread out your weight a little more evenly. You don't want to lose your balance and fall over. By doing what I say, she's able to reach where I'm standing. Good job. Now just do that like 50 more times. <laughs> Marina groans, but I'm already started. I glance back behind me. She's trailing only a couple of steps back. For all her worrying, she's doing okay. I'm just about to compliment her when I feel the earth shift beneath me and my foot slides loose. With the yelp, I lose my balance. Arms flying, flailing as I try not to fall. Then, faster than I can process, Marina's arm shoots out, grabs my sleeve, and tucks me back upright. Are you okay? Oh my god, is your ankle alright? It's not broken, is it? Oh my god. Panic is clearly painted across her face. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was about to say, she just saved you. The only thing injured is my pride. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. Good save. We climb up the rest of the way together, but slowly. Oh, at the top, both of us stretch and catch our breath. That wasn't so bad, was it? Besides the part where you almost died, maybe. <laughs> I didn't almost die. Besides, that's what I have my sidekick for. Oh, that's cute. She gives me a playful shove. Hey, I told you, I'm not the sidekick here. Uh-huh. You'll still have to earn the title of captain. Or commander. Whatever it is. <laughs> and you can do that by finding this thing before I do. Oh... Now that we're actually up to the ruins themselves, it's more clear just how tough this is going to be. The cave stretches a long way, like a deep scar in the mountain. 
Okay, I think this is a good stopping point. Let's pick this up where we left off. I, I have to say I'm enjoying it a lot more. Now that, one, I have more energy, two, and we're actually into the story a little bit. So, definitely let me know your thoughts. Um, message down below. Uh, and let me know if you actually agree and think that uh, Amber's right, that Marina's a sidekick, or if Amber's actually a sidekick on this story. Give me your thoughts in the comments down below. And with that, subscribe while you're kind of down there doing the things and stuff. So, you know, just click, 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 clack. All right. With that, I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye!